everybody's outside. It's crazy, man. Everybody got diss tracks on everybody. Hey, yo, what's good, you guys? It's Boomer and Jer watching Bali Star. Yo, we're going over a video by Fantastic Hip Hop saying uh, the biggest problem with Drake's second Kendrick diss track. But it's not only just Drake's uh, second diss to Kendrick. Well, like I said, everybody outside, man. Chris Brown dropped a diss track on Quavo. Taylor Swift dropped a diss track on Kim Kardashian. Kanye West remixed like that to diss Drake and J. Cole. Bro, everybody's outside. Everybody's outside. Everybody stepped outside and everybody wants to, uh, you know, duke it out. Everybody wants to battle, bro. Everybody wants to join in the brawl. Even telling us something like, F it. You know, I got some ish to say. Taylor Swift. The times we end is crazy. Yo. Before we get into this video, man, I want to talk about each individual diss track. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be summarized, so it ain't going to be long length. First off, Drake's diss to, second diss to, to, to Kendrick. Boy, the disrespect. It wasn't even a diss track. It was a disrespectful track. Using Tupac and Snoop AI? At first, we thought it was fake. Don't lie, you thought it was fake. We all thought it was fake. As all another AI use. But this is how Drake coming now. This is how Drake gonna play it. Boy. Oh my god, bro. Drake is a menace. Diabolical. I... I, I Words cannot explain the uh, the expression when he put that out, bro. It's like, dude, are you serious, bro? Are you serious right now, bro? Quoting Speed, you feel me? Shout out Speed, bro. Like, like, Drake went to such lengths to come at Kendra. He was like, hey, uh, where he was like, nah, nah, nah. We thought this feud died down or some ish like that, bro. I was like, man. Oh my god, bro. Either Kendrick got to come back three times as hard, or it's like, even if he comes back, I would diss track Drake two up on him. Now. For the Chris Brown Quavo diss track. Oh my god. Oh my god. Chris Brown, bro. No lie. Can rap than can rap better than half of these rappers out here, bro. And oh his diss track. I think I think this might be his first uh diss track ever. I think, I think. But definitely was his hardest. Oh my God! Like, like he and like I, he went in. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I didn't catch uh, what he was trying to put out there the first time when he say he smashed who. But then I caught the second time. You know what I'm saying? I go like it took me uh, listening to a couple people uh, to get it. I was like, oh, we put this and that is like, oh, he smashed. He smashed Quavo's girl while he was still with her, as opposed to Quavo smashing Chris Brown's girl. After she broken up with him. Now Chris Brown smashed Quavo's girl while she was still with him. Jeez, man. And I ain't gonna lie, man. Sweetie, bro. I be trying to get up in that too, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. Sweetie look good, man. I, 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 I crack. Of course. But she racking, bro. She's racking. Chris Brown smash two. And that ain't even the most disrespectful part. Nah, nah, nah. When he mentioned takeoff. 
said, RIP takeoff. He was realizing amigos or something, something. And, you know, when he went that night, we all wished it was you instead. My direct expression to that right there. And I was like that for like 15 seconds. I was like. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. He said something like that. Also, like on side note of that. It was crazy when he mentioned, oh, yeah, when they sat me next to you on Fashion Week, oh, the whole time I was just trying not to bash your head in, like, and then I saw the picture after that. I was like, because, of course, I don't watch stuff like that, but I didn't, but then I saw the picture of that, of them sitting together, and it's just like, oh, 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 my God. Oh, no, 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 no. no it was not a pretty looking picture, you feel me? It, 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 it was not a sight to behold. Oh man! <laughs> and not that this track now makes that picture like ten times more funny. It's like, bro, you can just see the them fuming next to each other, bro. It, but that takeoff one was disrespectful, like, bro. Again, these and they're all light skin too. These light skin rappers, man, like, what the heck is going on? The light skin rappers is like coming hard. Way too hard. Like, they is going, they pushing the line. They pushing boundaries. I mean, I'm pretty sure it wasn't that much different from how, uh, from how it was in the 90s and possibly early thousands. But for what we've seen in a long time, oh, oh, yeah. It, it, it was something renewed in our minds. Like, oh, my God, he went there. I can't remember the last time somebody went there. You know what I'm saying? Like, Chris Brown didn't just, again, not just diss him, bro. He didn't disrespect him. Like, no, those are fighting words. Not just rap battling, like, possibly not even just boxing. It's straight up, next time I see you, I, I see you. The only biggie uh, line I'm going to quote is like, next time I see you, it will be an ICU. <sighs> now, now, now this one's going to be brief, but Taylor Swift, this and Kim Kardashian. This one I had a, uh, listen to a couple people for, you know what I'm saying? Cause like when I saw this, I was like, what, what the? Alright, so Taylor Swift this uh this Kim Kardashian because she was still salty about Kanye West's uh famous song. You know what I'm saying? The whole go about it, you know what I'm saying, asking her if she could use her likeness and all that. You know, Kim recording it, saying that she could and you know she just uh, I mean she threw a couple lines in there. I didn't hear the song. I just saw the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't no, but it was just like subliminal, but it's like the way she put out the title of that song is like I didn't notice it at first until like they really scoped it and it was like they capitalized these letters. It's like, oh okay, okay, yeah, I see it. Um but yeah. Taylor Swift. Who knew? Now, um, Kanye West has jumped in the fray. A new challenger has arrived. Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Kanye West, man, decided to put his hat in the, uh, 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 in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Kata, I got you. You know, it's funny. After uh, I saw... Or listen to some people like, you know, uh, go over the lyrics and the song and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, this Drake meme page, I follow up on the IG. Do try to spin it. Say that it was also dissing K-Dot. I'm like, bro. <laughs> you fam. 
is so desperate. I swear, if you were not a funny meme page that also puts out other stuff that were funny and most likely true, I wouldn't even follow you, bruh. No cap, because you just capping. You capping to the masses right now. On this ish, but... Yeah, Kanye West. He also remixed like that, you know what I'm saying? To be, of course, like his own version. And, like, honestly more tighter, you know what I'm saying? I heard somebody say, uh, or I listened to somebody say, that's like, yo, like that would be like the first version. And, like, you know, Kanye West would be, like, uh, would be like the second part of it that you could, like, you know, put together. Almost like a train or something, you feel me? And it's like, go from the first part to the second part or something. I'm like, I've been listening to it now. Because I think Future... Future had a uh, had a verse in there that I don't think was like the first song. I don't think I don't think I haven't really put two songs together yet, yet. But I think Future's verse and Kanye West's version uh, was not like the first like that. You feel me? So it definitely could go to the other one. Who knows? But yo, son, my version of like that coming extra soon. I'm talking extra. Oh yeah. I'm still dropping, you feel me? Nah, I got to get this out expeditiously. You know what I'm saying before? Yeah, I don't want to say, but expect that as well, bro. Now now that I got all that out the way, let's get straight into uh, Fantastic Hip Hop's video. Let's go. Drake just released his second Kendrick Lamar diss track. He made this feud between him and Kendrick scarier than ever, but not in the way anybody could have expected. So when it comes to Drake's second song that's aimed at Kendrick Lamar, Taylor made freestyle. As Drake has nudged Kendrick to respond to him after about a week of waiting since his initial disc push-ups leaked, he just made one of the craziest times in not just rap, but in the entire music industry even crazier as beyond just coming at Kendrick alone here. He used both the biggest artist in music right now and the biggest threat the industry is facing to belittle Kendrick, and when we look at this in its entirety, while Drake's fans have been praising the OVO rapper for continuing to put the pressure on against his biggest rival, when we look at what this song will represent beyond the beef itself, it could set a dangerous precedent for the larger music industry. So the reason why Taylor made freestyle is really just an absolute insane moment is that beyond being just a Kendrick diss, Drake doesn't come at him alone here, but on this track, he features Tupac and Snoop Dogg, but not actually them. But right, not only that, when he called out Taylor Swift at the end, uh, saying that, yo, motherfuckers can't even drop when Taylor Swift drops, bro. He even admitted himself, like, you know, he can't drop because, you know, she gonna, like, outnumber him and all that stuff and, like, you know, album sales and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Doing Millie Billy, all that type-ish, you know what I'm saying? So, like, he was dissing Kendrick for not dropping it that Friday because Taylor Swift would drop. AI versions of these two legendary hip-hop icons, but before we can even discuss how irresponsible of a move it may have been to do this on Drake's end for the larger portion of the music industry, first we need to look at what Drake actually used them to do on the track. Now, as Tupac has been seen as the godfather of West Coast hip-hop and whose presence has played such a direct role in Kendrick's entire career as his very words have been featured on an album like To Pimp a Butterfly, Using the face of the region Kendrick's from to speak to him as Drake awaits a response was definitely a master troll move on Drizzy's end, and as this AI Pac talks directly to Kendrick on this verse, it really shows that more than ever, Drake is willing to do just about anything in this beef as from the very premise of doing this to the verse AI Pac has. This is really a next level tactical move on Drake's end whether you love or hate it. Now, as Drake's pen fuels this artificial version of Tupac and tells Kendrick to fight back, Fake Pac tells him to attack Drake through some of the most talked about routes that could be taken to diss him, and this could have potentially just crumbled part of Kendrick's offensive effort for Drake. And as Drake's AI Pac also tells Kendrick that his disses on Like That were weak, and that he can't make threats that he can't back up because he's not truly living the lifestyle that he raps about with bars like, You're supposed to be the boogeyman, go do what you do. Unless this is a moment that you tell us this is not really you. In that case, there's nothing left to say, I just pass it to Snoop. It shows that Drake is trying to call Kendrick's bluff, and after an entire week of using social media to taunt him and just failing, at least you can say that this is easily the most calculated and diabolical move we have seen from Drake so far when it comes to trying to take the lead against Kendrick. 
Now, while the ethics of using AI are questionable from a musical standpoint, all in all, this is a creative way for Drake to try to shut down Kendrick, despite how choppy and lifeless this fake version of Pac sounds, as all it is is Pac's voice masking Drake's flow, but right alongside fake Pac. Fake Snoop Dogg is featured on the second verse of the track, and as this performance comes from Drake's pen as well. He continues to come at Kendrick here by rapping from the perspective of one of his biggest mentors on the West Coast and how he is disappointed by Kendrick in this very moment. Now with this fake version of Snoop saying that he is confused and disappointed by Kendrick's lack of a response, and really soaks this in by throwing some nasty bars out as he even questions the choice of even handing Kendrick the torch of the West Coast as a whole over a decade ago. This performance keeps up the same energy of the first verse, but focuses more on provoking Kendrick to straight up release a diss to defend his honor as opposed to just belittling him. Lines like right now, it's looking like you writing out the game plan on how to lose, how to bark up the wrong tree and then get your head popped in a crowded room. World is watching this chess game, but oh, you out of moves. Really punch in this idea and overall, like... I wonder if y'all seen uh, Snoop's reaction to it, bro. Dude basically had no words to say. <laughs> no words to say, bro. I was like, Snoop, say something. Where are you, Snoop? Again, while this fake version of Snoop Dogg sounds so Give hollow, us a real the larger than life charisma that the real Snoop has brought throughout his decades worth of performances. Knowing that this fake Snoop is rapping bars that were written by Drake in the same cadence that he always uses, it still makes this performance accomplish what it's trying to do, but most importantly on this track, Beyond the trolling and intimidation tactics of using fake versions of legendary rappers, the third and final verse on this song comes from Drake in full form, and with Drake following up on what he said on his last diss track, Push Ups Here, he continues to put Kendrick on the hot seat as he says that his first diss didn't even take him two hours to write, and that the next one is going to make Kendrick look like a coward, which is a crazy claim to make. But it does highlight in full force just how much Drake is on the attack here, and while lines like these are really here in an effort to poke Kendrick and get him to drop that response on Drake's time. Ultimately, what the diss Drake is really trying to hurt Kendrick with on this track centers around is none other than Taylor Swift, and how the release of her new 31 song album, The Tortured Poets Department, is the reason why he's holding back his response too, on as he the doesn't songs. want to compete with her. Now, while Drake hyping up Taylor and calling her the biggest gangster in the music business is kind of hilarious, what's crazy here is that Drake tries to label Kendrick as a corporate industry puppet, which is really just an absolutely insane thing for him to say. Right. While coming at Kendrick from this angle definitely did give Drake some sort of competitive edge against him in this moment. When you look beyond the lines, it's clear that he is trying to push Kendrick to play against him on his own terms, make him look pathetic, and most importantly... No matter how Drake spins the Taylor Swift effect to try to hurt Kendrick, he knows that deep down inside, if Kendrick's diss is as lethal as some people have said that it is, with her new album that is set to sell over 2 million copies in its first week overshadowing everything else in music right now, it will serve as a shield for Drake that while may not protect him from the scrutiny of the hip-hop world, will make this potential career-altering attack not affect his reputation in the mainstream which will as a result keep Drake as a brand operating in full force. Now, despite this being the truth on some level for Drake, I have to give him props for the way he's able to flip situations that are against him into things that nah, make him facts. stronger, as well he very well could have been trying to protect he, himself. He, he definitely him. proved himself now more than ever, more than when he did back-to-back, -back, at coming at more than just a meek meal, bro. He definitely proved himself. Like... <laughs> Kendrick we all not this. expecting this from to Drake. most people because of the way Drake has went about this right now it looks like he has never been more confident in his ability to destroy him now beyond this record as a diss itself I think while using Pac and Snoop to come at Kendrick was creative as a battle move and is definitely going to get people talking the precedent that is now set in the music industry because the biggest rapper in the world just featured AI versions of artists on his song could spiral out of control very quickly and overall is super irresponsible for somebody of Drake's stature to do in an industry where musicians are already fighting to protect their talent and property to avoid having their presence diminished by actual robots. So going forward, with two diss tracks under his belt, I'd say that Drake has done a great job of protecting his image in this feud and putting the spotlight back on Kendrick, but still. Even though it may seem like to some that Drake is closing in on his biggest rival ever, I don't think Kendrick is phased by any of this, and while people may get mad at Kendrick in this very moment, ultimately, all of their worries and doubts will be put to rest when he does release a response, and while he needs to definitely get something out in a timely fashion, 
Whatever Kendrick has planned, I don't think any of these moves from Drake have changed his strategy, especially considering that Kendrick is rumored to drop a new album in May, but if any of Drake's moves did, while people may be ready to hear Kendrick, by changing his strategy to compete against Drake, he would be playing right into Drake's hand by giving him what he wants, so I think we are still going to have to sit for a little longer for Kendrick, but as Drake what took three weeks that? to respond, to ocean? not even give Kendrick a full week before clowning him is kind of hypocritical. Now, as Snoop Dogg has already reacted to Drake using an AI version of him by pretty much just being so confused that all he could do is laugh, it's going to be interesting and important to see how the people who were around Death Row Records, and especially Tupac, feel about having an artist who is no longer hears voice used on a record from a rapper as big as Drake, and while some people tried to justify the ethical... Some people think, if Tupac was still alive today, would he have approved this? Man of Drake doing this by comparing it to Kendrick using Pac's voice on Mortal Man and for having deep fakes in his Heart Part 5 music video. This comparison doesn't make any sense at all when you look beyond the surface as Tupac's words on Mortal Man actually came from an interview of his and he had permission to use them from Pac's mother and with the deep fakes. Kendrick was using really? people who he had genuine connections with like Kobe Bryant and Nipsey Hussle and he did this to honor their legacies and everything they represented so comparing this to Drake oh. just using a legacy artist to antagonize his rival. This comparison just doesn't make any sense and while Drake may have won the battle tonight, Long term, this move can end up doing way more harm for him. So let me know, at this point in really? the Drake and Kendrick beef, also, who is winning? And going forward, what do you think is going to happen next? I can't wait. Yeah, man. Ish has gone insane now. Ish has gone insane. And we're still not even to the half of the year yet. <sighs> Y'all let me know your thoughts about possibly all the diss tracks which I mentioned in earlier or maybe specifically the Drake and Kendrick well Drake's latest diss to Kendrick now y'all let me know down in the comment section down below man get ready for the like that boom mix oh yeah coming with that soon man make sure to leave a like support the video if you enjoyed it subscribe if you're new so that we join up with the bomb squad I'll catch y'all in the next one, 100. Boom! Yeah, yeah, yeah.